Hey everyone. So we are gonna dive into the Q&A today. And I just wanted to say before we jump into it that this is probably gonna be a long one. So feel free to just have this on in the background and listen. There's, I mean, I'll say there's a few points where you, you wanna look at something, but I'll say when that is, so yeah. Well, I can't believe it, but <laughs> we hit 4,000 subscribers. Now it's like, 4.11, okay, so we've gone over. But yeah, anyway, 4,000 subscribers, it's just insane. Feels like it was just barely a month ago that I was saying we hit 3,000, and it seems like it was barely a month before that that I was saying we hit 2,000. Which, I don't know if any of you know this, but <laughs> is huge because in my second year on YouTube, we'll be hitting one year, our one year, or sorry, two year anniversary on December 23rd. Funny thing about that being, in my first year, I hit 500 subscribers, and in my second year, obviously we're still a couple months away from that, but I, I went from 500 to 4,000, so it's just crazy. This last year has been so wonderful for the channel, and I can't thank you all enough for that. It's just awesome. <laughs> Do this all for you, and so long as you all keep watching, I'll continue to produce. <laughs> all right, so. I asked you all to give me some questions in a recent post, so we're going to do a Q&A. Also, we're going to be doing a giveaway at the end of this. To enter that giveaway, just make sure that you comment on this video. I'll be using a random comment picker to select the winner, but after we go through all the questions, I will show you the prize, and yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool one. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, let's just jump into this. All right, so I'm just going to go from top to bottom, read them all off, so yeah, let's just get started. So, Snowstorm Unicorn asks, I was wondering if you could tell us what to look for in different types of agates and what exactly the differences are between them. Also, if you could explain Jasper agates, that would be super helpful. So, that is a very wide encompassing question because I look for different things in every type of agate. So, uh, let me grab some agates out and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Alrighty, so to answer that question, it varies quite a bit from agate to agate. So we're very spoiled in Montana with Montana agates because you get just about all of the cool things you would want in an agate. So you can get awesome pieces like this that are just nice and banded. It's probably not gonna show up very well, but really nice fine bands. Focus please, thank you. And moss and stuff, that's awesome. You also get Montana agates that have big old crystal pockets. You get Montana agates that are just picture-perfect water lines, like this. Just a gorgeous water line. Huge range in color. And nice big chunks like this that are really, really dark, which means it's going to have a lot of moss. Here, let's see if I can get to glow a little bit. Yeah, you can see all that banding of moss in there. That's going to be a very pretty agate. And yeah, we're very spoiled in Montana because we get all of those things. I'm not picky. I, I'm happy with all agates even clear agates bec that don't have any of this obvious, you know, features because fine banding can actually lead to, um, fortification, or not fortification agates, uh, iris agates. Wow, that was really hard to find that word for some reason. <laughs> so with Montana agates, I'm looking for anything really. I don't, I'm not picky about Montana agates. Then you move on to something like a, uh, TP Canyon agate. You are looking for fortifications, pure, so purely like that is that is the goal. It's fortification patterns like this. That is the goal. So you can find agates, agate like chert nodules, but unless they have these really really nice banded patterns, they're not really worth much. Oh, here's another example of a Montana agate. Sorry, <laughs> really pretty banding in this one. But yeah, and you know, you could talk about Bear Canyons, which have just amazing crystal pockets, which are one of the things I look for. The other thing being, again, fortification patterns. And they are just wonderful. Or you have stuff like fire agates, where again, that's gonna be some really cool banding, but the real thing you're looking for is color pockets. So put simply, it, it it depends on what agate you're looking for. Some agates, you're looking for completely different things than other agates, so we're spoiled in Montana because Montana has a huge range of awesome agates. 
And then as for Jasper Agate, so Chalcedony, Agate, and Jasper are all just crypto crystalline quartz, which means they're, they are composed of quartz crystals, but just on such a small scale that you can't really see them without a microscope, whereas uh, a quartz crystal is a macro crystalline because you can actually see the crystal structure. So it's not uncommon for agates to have little bits of jasper or vice versa, a jasper agate, which is just a jasper that has clear pockets. This is a good example of agate because they're just, they're basically the exact same thing. The only difference is chalcedony doesn't have really any features. It's just usually mainly clear. Agate is usually banded or has moss and jasper is opaque. If it has really weak color, it's called chert, and if it's gray or black or tan, it's called flint. All of them are the exact same thing though, so it's just a vein of a different consistency of the same kind of rock, if that makes any sense. Alright, so next question. What's the best Dremel bits for carving rock? I find the diamond ones wear out extremely quickly. Diamond is absolutely the best for, for carving rock. I would recommend working it wet if it's a pretty good hardness, like an agate or something like that, definitely work it wet because you'll extend the life of your, your bits just exponentially. Or carve softer stuff like, um, I carve this all the time. This is just porphyry. Porphyry is wonderful to carve, same with sandstone. Soapstone is awesome if you can get your hands on it. But yeah, the problem with anything else like tungsten carbide or you know, anything like that is it's gonna wear out even faster than the diamond does. So you're you're gonna want diamonds no matter what you carve. Just work it wet, I promise they'll last a lot longer. And that's kind of one of the occupational hazards of carving stones like agates is you're gonna run through bits. <laughs> it sucks, but it is just the reality of carving. Luckily, uh, places like Harbor Freight, some stuff you get from there is awful, some stuff you get is wonderful, and their diamond bits are awesome. You can buy, I think I have some right around here. Yeah, right here. These assortments, which comes with all of these bits, and it's like 10 or 15 bucks, and this will last me a year. You know, sometimes I have to buy one to replace one burr, like, <laughs> you can see this one snapped off, but it's no biggie. For, for 15 bucks, it, it goes pretty far, honestly. Oh, sorry, last question was Mark France. All right, so Cindy B asks, are there any books that you would recommend that would help a beginner rock hunter? And where is your store in Billings? <laughs> well, my store is on 2109 Grand Avenue, uh, kind of on the west end of town. Uh, and as far as books, that depends hugely on what area you live in. So I'm, most states will have a book for rock hunting that state specifically. The Rock Hunting Montana book was a huge asset when I first started rock hunting. It helped me so much. And yeah, there's there's books for pretty much every state. Sometimes, depending on the state, like multiple books for each, you know, region of the state because everything is so different. But the the Falcon guides specifically are wonderful because they give detailed descriptions of what to look for and sites to go to. Other than that, mineral identification books are are your friend for sure, because then you can actually start identifying what you're looking at out in the field and sometimes you realize that there's way more around you than you realized. <laughs> now next question, Oak Tree 3. I'll ask you the same question Katie did answered. How old were you when you got first got excited about finding rocks and fossils? So rocks came kind of later. I was always picking up rocks but when I was a kid my dad would always take us up to the Pryor Mountains which I've taken you guys to multiple times in, in several videos where we would look for devil's toenails because my childhood dream that never went away was I want to be a paleontologist and you can find these not exaggerating by the million out there so we would go out there when I oh I was young probably like six or seven something like that when we first went up there and that from then on I was constantly looking down on the ground but actually I answered this in uh, Kate's Rock Around the World 2 her second one that I was included on it, it's funny enough what actually really sparked the the need to go rock hunting was um, 
one of those dinky little sift your own gem bags and like not from like a, a mine or anything with like actual gem rough. I mean, it was literally like one of the ones you get from like a, a mini golf course or something like that. We went to Reptile Gardens in South Dakota and I got one there and had fun trying to figure out and identify everything that I got inside of the bag and realized while doing my research that like four fifths of the stuff that I was reading about, I can find in Montana, which just like lit a fire that I need to go find this stuff myself. <laughs> and yeah, that snowballed, obviously, because now I have a shop where I sell rocks and fossils. So <laughs> yeah, that snowballed quite a bit. All right, so Anna Martin, hi Theo. First, I want to want to congratulate on the YouTube videos. I love all of them. Wanted to first ask, was carving your first love with rocks and wood? If not, what got you into rock hunting? Do you have a background in art? I love your jewelry you create. Yes, okay. So, um, with wood, I actually worked at a, a cabinet shop in town with my dad. My dad worked there and he got me on. So my first entry into wood was I worked in the finish booth. So, you know, we'd be putting on our, the finish tops on whatever anything came through the shop. It would go through the finish booth and we would finish it. So that's kind of where my background in wood came from. I actually carved, funny enough, carved rock before I carved wood. And carving just kind of, I just wanted to do it. If, if you heard of Bobby Duke, I watched one of his videos and was like, oh, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> that looks like fun. And it, yeah, again, snowballed. So I, I talked about what got me into rock hunting. Background in art, yes, actually. I I have a, I do a lot of stuff, like uh, I've drawn my whole life. I love, love, love to paint. Actually, here, really quick. I actually have a couple here that I can show you. So here's one of the paintings I did recently. Oh, well, I guess not really recently. I painted this for my dad for Christmas of 19, so it wasn't really recent. <laughs> and this other one, Stephen Jan, if you're watching, look away now, because this is for you guys and I don't want you to see it yet. <laughs> look away. All right, have you looked away? Okay, good. Here's the other one. Did this one recently as well. So yeah, I love painting. I love landscape painting and just nature painting. On top of that, I do a lot, a lot, a lot of photography. Way less now that my camera's dead and I only have a GoPro, but that should be changing soon. I'm looking at a Canon M50 and that's gonna be awesome. And, okay, I think that was all of the questions there. Um, what's the next one? This one is for, okay, Margot Margo Dolan? Dolan? Sorry, I'm awful with names. Uh, this one is for my daughter, a fellow bonafide. What is your favorite skull, your own work, and could you show us a picture? Actually, I've done several, but... I've done several, but I don't actually have any of them here. This one probably is actually my favorite though. I did this one in a video a while back and it was just really unique. It was way different from the other ones that I've done and yeah, I like it a lot. Also, be excited if you're into that kind of stuff because I have like four more skulls that I'm planning on carving this winter. All right, next one. Oh, I'm gonna butcher this name and I'm so sorry. Uh, Trishak, Trishak, Trishak? Clark, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I love your channel. I've been hounding since I was four and my dad paid me a penny for every agate I could find in the wheat field. Man, score. I have an older rock saw for cutting slabs, but have many smaller agates I would like to cut. Is it possible to cut a one inch agate and what would you use? Absolutely, I do all the time. Best thing for that would be a trim saw, but if you're on a budget, the Harbor Freight tile saw is a steal. It's a wonderful, wonderful little saw. And it's very, very affordable. It does not cost very much. I bought mine like four or five years ago and it's still still running strong even though it's a little abused. <laughs> but it's okay, because it's, it's really cheap. So you can get a new one really easily. So... Oh, I'm gonna have to think about this one. I'll come back to this one, Stephanie. The question is, hey Theo, please tell us, what was the strangest thing that ever happened to you while you were out rock hunting? And no, not the kayak story, we've all seen that. Uh, I, I keep trying to forget that, honestly. I'm gonna have to come back to that because I'm gonna have to think about that one. So, Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm. Hello, and I, I, can I just say that I love that spray bottle that you got for Kate? No, I'm not insinuating that you should get me one. I'm just saying that was an awesome purchase. <laughs> How long have you been studying the rocks in your area? 
And why are those areas that connect called sutures? Okay, so I'll start with the bottom one. Sutures. Sutures. <laughs> Let me just reach behind me here. So, sutures. This is what she's referring to. Sutures are these little branchy patterns that separate the walls of, um, that are called, okay, so ammonites and baculites, whole species of ammonoid, they are chambered, just like a chambered nautilus. So the way that works is they have chambers that are hollow and they will either put pour water into those chambers to go down or inflate them with gas to go, or to go, um, you know, become more buoyant and that's how they move up and down in the water column. So each one of those chambers is separated by a wall called a septa. And where those meet, they create these little branch patterns called sutures. And yeah, they're awesome and I love them so much. Anyway, <laughs> uh, how long have I been studying the rocks in my area? Like, oh, it's 2020, probably coming up on like nine years. I've been doing this a while now. And as a profession, not too long, but like four or five years. But I've been I've been rock hunting for a while now, seriously. So yeah, got quite a lot of reading. Google is your best friend, honestly, because you can answer any question you want over there. And yeah, just it's it's been an ongoing thing, and I still am doing constant research because you never know everything. It's one of the beauties of rock hunting. <laughs> so. How do I tell if the garnets I collected are star garnets? At the moment, they are covered in a layer of something. Should I tumble them or soak them in something? Um, I actually have a few that I can show you if my camera wants to cooperate. Um, it'll be pretty obvious. They actually flash kind of like a uh, piece of tiger eye or like labradorite. That sounds weird, but yeah, they actually do. I'll show you in just a second. And I would recommend if it's just kind of like a caked mud layer, throw them all into a tumbler with no grit and just soap. It'll clean them off beautifully. And if it is anything more than that, I it may be hard if they're small, but toothbrush and on dish soap. It works really well. So let us let me go grab out some of my star garnets and I'll see if I can get them to cooperate. You can see that it flashes along that plane. So this is absolutely a star garnet. That's not a reflection. It's a lot like a labradorite where it, it'll flash along that that line right there. I'm sorry, this is super small, so I have to be really zoomed in, so it is not great clarity, but yeah, you get the picture. That right there is a star garnet, so you will, you'll be able to tell. Okay, so, oh, that last question was by Deanna Bell, by the way. Sorry, I, I realized that I forgot to mention that. So, next question, Sal Salish Sequest. Wow, 4,000 plus subscribers. What is your favorite stone to find, your favorite stone to carve, your favorite stone to facet? So, <laughs> uh, in no particular order, I have a new favorite stone to carve. I used to always say Labradorite because it looks so cool or Porphyry because it's so easy, but I have a new favorite. Sorry, one sec, I'm coming. You know, w leading up to this video, I kept telling myself to actually have all my stuff out and ready instead of having to walk off multiple times. So my new favorite stone to carve is soapstone. And oh my gosh, it carves like butter. I love it so much. It's so nice. It just carves effortlessly. I love it so much. It's wonderful to work with. So my favorite thing to find is honestly whatever my current hunt is. <laughs> And that sounds like a cheap answer, but it's so true. I get equally excited about hunting jaspers, agates, fossils. You know, when I go crystal digging, that's always super excited. Go gem panning. I, it probably comes through in my videos, but I, I usually am equally excited about everything I look for. I used to say bear canyons, but I don't know. I just appreciate every hunt so much because they're all so different and yeah. All right, so my favorite things to facet would be garnets. I love fastening garnets. I've got three right here that I have faceted. Of course, they're not showing up too well. I love how bright that one is. These two are a bit darker. But yeah, I love fastening garnets. Uh, other than that, <laughs> you probably saw these recently in one of Kate's videos. These are Montana Diamonds, which are double-terminated smoky quartz, and they just look amazing when you fasten them. 
look at that. This champagne colored beautiful little stone right there is what they look like. They really got a thick crust on the outside, but as you can see, they actually get more clear the deeper in you go. So you can't really get huge stones out of it, but my gosh, they're just so pretty. And then lastly, it would actually, funny enough, be quartz. You find so many just glass clear crystals over at like Crystal Park. They're just perfectly glass clear. And as they sit, these don't have much value, if we're being honest. But if you facet them, they just look incredible. They facet so well. I love working with these things here. Let me turn the brightness down a bit. There we go. Now you can see it a little more naturally. Yeah, they're just so much fun to work with. That emerald cut is one of my favorite stones I've ever cut. So pretty. That little beauty right here is just all over the place. I actually counted as I was cutting this one. This stone right here has 98 facets. So it's a pretty busy little stone. But yeah, they just look so good. I love fastening these things so much. They're a lot of fun to work with. There's a South Dakota rose quartz right there. But yeah, that would be my answer. Garnets, uh, Montana diamonds, and clear quartz, just because it's so underrated and easy to uh, facet. All right, so next question is from Angie Does Stuff. Why did you decide to start a YouTube channel? Do you have a full-time job as well? And is it related to your channel topic? Do you tell people you have a channel? Why or why not? And if you do, what's their reaction? Um, I actually decided to make a YouTube channel because I, well, okay, let me, let me, let, I'll have to answer these in a different order. So I do have a full-time job. This is my full-time job. I sell rocks, fossils, jewelry. I make jewelry. I do carvings and stuff like that. So everything I do on my channel, I'm technically working. <laughs> like my channel itself isn't my job, but what I do on my channel is my job. And I actually created my channel because I make and sell so much stuff that everybody kept asking me how I do it, you know, how I make the things that I make. So instead of giving long-winded descriptions, I figured why not just start making videos and show them. And yeah, it kind of just turned into something that I became really passionate about and I'm happy I stuck with it. And I will tell some people, depends on just the situation that sounds weird when I say it like that but <laughs> I'm not I don't usually bring it up honestly because just I, I don't know I never really think about it <laughs> how are you able to find all the oh sorry Craig Nash how are you able to find all the good rocks along the gravel bars when they're all gray and drabby when dry so I actually never used to do this but ever since like this year actually is when I really started spray bottle is your best friend a eh? and just experience is the best tutor. Like I went at, a couple of years ago when I would go looking for rocks in the silt, I would come away empty handed every single time. And this year I've really, really gotten my eye in for it. Like even last year, I wasn't finding as much stuff in the silt. So it's, it's really just practice. You, after a while, you really start to get an eye for what a rock looks like on the outside, especially agates, because they look so different than everything else in our area. They, if you see, you know, like this knobbly texture on the outside, you know for a fact that it's either gonna be a jasper or an agate, so. <laughs> or, as Kate calls them, double stone. Uh, walk toward the sun at sunset or sunrise and it will make stones glow like crazy. So that, again, is your best friend, but really, it's just finding enough agates to know what to look for so you can identify what they look like on the outside when they're dirty. And other than that, spray bottle, spray bottle, spray bottle. It is, it is such an asset. Um, Tina Stoddard, congratulations on the success of your channel. Do you remember your first carving? What was it and do you still have it? Thanks for sharing your amazing videos. I do actually. Here, let me go grab it. So, this right here, and I will never get rid of this, this is very sentimental to me because it started quite the snowball. This is the first carving I ever did. This is a beautiful piece of Montana Septarian, and I was actually trying to carve an arc shell. This is a ponderous arc, and I'd find a bunch of them in Florida, and I thought it would be fun to kind of just carve a little seashell. Especially since septarian 
polishes very, very easily and carves very, very easily. So yeah, that's my very, very first carving and it's not going anywhere. All right, so next question. Again, I am sorry if I am pronouncing this wrong, but Brandy Amenrud, I think that's right, Amenrud? I don't know, I'm sorry. <laughs> what is your advice for a newbie rock tumbler? Best machines, grids, etc. Are there absolute don'ts? So, to, I, I just, I'm already afraid of how long this video is gonna be, so to get more in depth, I actually have a video on tumbling if you would want to check that out, I go into the do's and don'ts pretty in depth. So that would be the best place to go for that. Just because this is going to get long, even longer if I answer all of those here. Best machine undoubtedly would be just lower tone all the way. Lower tone, lower tone, lower tone. They are amazing machines. I've had mine for like three years and it has literally been running every single day since I bought it. Other than that, check out my other video on tumbling. It will answer a lot of those questions. So, Purple Craft Shack asks, congratulations, what's the best reasonably priced products to use for polishing? Um, I actually am not probably the best person to answer this question because I pretty much use my Dremel and my flat lap for all of my polishing or my tumbler. I don't actually have the diamond pad attachments for an angle, angle grinder. Those are definitely the best way to polish bigger rocks. But yeah, that's, I, I probably am not the best person to answer this question because what I use to polish are really not, they work really well for me, but they're definitely not the like most ideal way of going about polishing. I'm sorry I, that I cannot answer that question better. And next question. Calcedony Clapper, what are some of your favorite hobbies and what is the largest agate you have found? So, rock hunting, obviously, is a huge one, obviously. Uh, fossil hunting would be a huge second one. Like I said uh, earlier, I love painting, I love photography. I do a lot of photography. Again, less now that my camera's broken, but other than that, I am a very avid fisher, fisherman. I fish all the time. When we go to Florida, that's like one of my main things. Uh, very, very close second to rock hunting is shelling actually, which I never really get to do because I only get to do it in Florida, which we go to like once or twice a year. And <laughs> now very occasionally when we go along the Yellowstone, you can find mussels, which kind of sates that need a little bit, but I am, as you've probably seen in the backgrounds regularly, I am a very avid sheller. I love going shelling. It's one of my favorite things to do. Largest agate I ever found. Hmm, one sec. All right, so as far as the biggest agates I've ever found, Montana agate. This would be the biggest Montana agate I've ever found. It is like, oh, let me see. It's about four pounds, just a little under four pounds. And funny enough, me and Alexis are actually tied. This is the biggest one she ever found, and it is literally like... <laughs> it's like two ounces lighter, so yeah, we're pretty much tied for biggest agates. Okay, next question. Rockin' with T asks, which came first? Did you find a really cool rock one day and then became a rock hound, or did you decide to take up rock hounding and then found your first cool rock? That's an awesome question. Had to go find it. <laughs> that would be this agate right here. And yes, it really is that blue. I found this probably on my second or third actual rock hunting trip and it blew my mind. And it is still to this day one of my absolute favorite rocks that I own, even though it's probably smaller than any of my other, you know, really amazing ones. But this, this little blue incredible beauty is what really, 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 really sparked the, it went from I want to do this to an actual need. <laughs> this is absolutely one of my sentimental favorites. It is just a beautiful little blue agate. All right, next question. Again, I, this should not be a name that I would have problems with. Um, <laughs> but again, I'm probably gonna mess it up. So Marianne Backman, Backman, Marian, Marianne, Marianne. Is Alexis only obsessed with frogs or is it all amphibians? And what kind of dog is Cyrus? Cyrus is a mini Aussie rat terrier. His mom was a purebred mini Aussie and his dad was a mini Aussie rat terrier. 
So he's got definitely more Ozzy than Rat Terrier, but yeah, he's 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 my little baby. Uh, is Alexis only obsessed with frogs or is it all amphibians? Alexis is obsessed with all animals, period. <laughs> it doesn't matter, so long as it's not a creepy crawly. Like, she doesn't like spiders and, you know, the obvious things like centipedes. She hates grasshoppers with a passion, but other than that, she loves any animal, really. She wants a snake really, really bad. All right, last question. Helpful tips for beginners who want to explore the world of slabbing, cutting, carving, cabochons, and tumbling. My answer to all of those would be just do it. <laughs> that sounds so like not helpful, but it's so true. Practice, practice, practice is absolutely the best teacher for anything. So <laughs> don't get, my two recommendations would be just start, just do it, and don't get discouraged because I mean, my, you saw my first carvings, they're nothing crazy, they're nothing special, but you just keep going at it, and getting better and better until you're doing stuff like this with your eyes closed, you know? <laughs> just like anything. And um, for calving, you can actually make cabochons with adrenaline. And that might be a video I do at some point because I know a lot of people don't have a flat lap or a calving machine. Them with diamond burrs, use sanding drums to smooth out the lines and throw them in a tumbler. It's really that easy because so long as you're using something hard, it will level everything out evenly. And yeah, I, I, I'll admit, I actually, when I'm like mass producing cabochons, which I do regularly, I will shape them on my flat lap and polish them in a tumbler just because I can do literally a full batch of cabochons, like 200 cabochons in one go. They're all polished and it takes way less time. And then, yeah, I think I already answered tumbling questions. Same for you. Oh, sorry, I never said the name. Raina Jane, oh gosh, I'm gonna butcher this too. Bonifacio? I, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm so bad with names. Um, <laughs> I, 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 like I said earlier, t uh, check out my video on tumbling because I have a whole video that goes into the do's and don'ts and, you know, basics and yeah, it'll get you started. Lortone is actually, I think it's a Amazon sponsored product, so you can get them. If you have an Amazon Prime account, you can get a Lortone for really not that much, especially for how long it will last you. It's really not that bad. And yeah, I, I highly recommend the $25 Rotary cutter from Harbor Freight. That's my first ever Dremel type thing that I ever used. It's 25 bucks and it's worth every penny. And the if you wanna enter into the world of slabbing, you're not gonna be able to cut huge rocks, but I mean, I could probably cut this on that. This, this is probably the biggest rock I could cut on it, which is, it's not bad. It's not horrible at all. And it's like 40, 50 bucks, I think. Like I said, mine is still going extremely strong and I've been using it nonstop for quite some time. So yeah, it's it's one of those things that is extremely daunting until you start doing it. And you once you get into it, you realize it is really not that hard. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. And you'll just learn all these little tricks and tools to put under your belt and it just, it exponentially gets easier as you go. I just can't believe how much the channel's grown in the last year. It's just crazy. It's last two months, especially, well, three months, going from 1,000 subscribers to 4,000 subscribers in what seems like no time at all. It's just amazing. You guys make me do it very happily, and I'll continue to do it so long as you guys are watching. It's It, it means the world to me, and I'm sorry if I'm getting awkward because I, I don't handle this kind of stuff well. <laughs> I'm an awkward human if you haven't picked that up, but I think for now, let's get into the giveaway. Alrighty, so for the giveaway, you are going to win this beautiful piece of agatized wood, this gorgeous waterline agate, this awesome jasper, a polished mussel. This one isn't polished yet, obviously. I haven't, I don't have any polished on hand, but I will polish it. A polished baculite, not this one specifically, but I have a bunch from a recent trip, that video is coming out soon by the way, that you'll be getting one of those, and this awesome bismuth crystal. So, to enter the giveaway, all you need to do is comment on this video, and it's that simple. I'm gonna be using a random comment picker because it's way easier than, yeah, <laughs> trying to pick one. So yeah, just comment on this video, and yeah, you will be entered in for the giveaway. Also, this is just for extra brownie points. Have to be on the honor system because I have no way of actually checking if you've done it or not. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
for extra points, I want you all to go subscribe to a channel that you have not subscribed to yet. And the, the main point is make sure it's a channel that's under a thousand subscribers. Your first thousand is so hard to hit and the growth is exponential. Once you hit 1000, as I well know, it is really hard to hit that 1000 without a lot of support. So if you need some suggestions, go check out Montana Rock Mom, Calcedony Clapper, Gravel Bar Hopper, Michael Van Dyke. Oh, let's go down a little further. Sorry, one sec. The Rock. These are all awesome, awesome, awesome channels. Really awesome, and none of them are, have hit a thousand yet, and they all deserve to. So yeah, go check those channels out, and I don't know, tell them in the comments that I sent you or something. Alrighty, well, I think that is gonna do it for this one. Just once more, you guys are all the best. Thank you so much for the support that this channel has been getting, and I hope it continues, and I will do my best to continue to provide content that you all enjoy. I've got some really cool stuff planned project-wise to do this winter, and yeah, it should just keep getting cooler and cooler. Also, I don't wanna preemptively plan or jinx myself, but I have a huge giveaway planned for 5,000 subscribers, so look forward to that at some point, if, whenever, if ever we hit that point. <laughs> and yeah, in the meantime, just thank you all for your support. It means so much. As I said earlier, uh, I will have a link to my Etsy store in the description and the Facebook group in the description. And yeah, uh, it's just, it's awesome. Thank you all so much. And hopefully I can continue to deliver content that you enjoy. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for this one. Hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you all soon.